Today's guest reveals in his book, Start Here, Go Anywhere, that you can make a bad choice, but still with the help of God, end up on the right road. His name is Richie Hughes, and he's my very special guest today on Babby's House. It's coming up right now. Good friends, I'm Babby Mason, and welcome to Babby's House. I'm really happy today to have Richie Hughes. He's the author of a great book called Start Here, Go Anywhere, a book that will help us to make wise choices, get us on the right road to doing God's will for our lives. It's going to be a great discussion. I don't want you to miss it, so stick around for that. But you know, at the on every show, at the top of every show, I love to encourage you. That's my heart. And I've made some choices as well. I've made a decision to follow Jesus. And this is a, a song that I hope will encourage your heart. I believe you're the Son of God and you came from heaven above. I believe you're the son of man and you rule the earth with love. I believe you gave your life on a cross at Calvary. I believe you conquered death and you reign in victory. Now every step I take is toward you. Every song I sing is for you. I believe in you. Jesus, I believe in you, Jesus, and had it not been for your grace, I don't know where I'd be today, I believe in you, Jesus, I believe in you, Jesus, I believe. I believe you know me well and your plan for me is great. I believe through your mighty power that I can do all things. I believe you were and are the ancient of all days. I believe I'll lift you up and give your name the praise. Now every step I take is toward song I sing is for you. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. And had it not been for your grace, I don't know where I'd be today. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. Lord, I believe. I believe, I believe. I believe in you. I believe, I believe, I believe. Jesus, I believe in you. Oh, I
I guess we got caught up in the crazy housing boom. I lost my job and lost my benefits. We had been in the house so long, we didn't want to lose it. I was only going to pay interest for the first five years. I fell really behind in my mortgage payments and received a foreclosure notice. But we couldn't pay this. We got hit pretty hard when the introductory mortgage rate expired. What these people share is that they all got in trouble with their mortgages, and they all called a certified housing counselor for help. Our housing counselor looked at our paperwork and she knew something was wrong. She understood what needed to be done, and she helped me work it out with the bank. The housing counselor got to the right people right away. This is a free service. If you think you're in trouble, don't wait. Call the National Foundation for Credit Counseling now. The earlier you call, the better your options. We were smart. We called the housing counselor before we got into some serious trouble. We can help. Call 1-866-687-6322. Diet and exercise are never easy. Then again, neither is dying. Sadly, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and stroke kill nearly a million people a year. Most of these deaths could be prevented. Please, talk to your doctor about your risk for diabetes and heart disease. And if your doctor recommends lifestyle changes or medication, listen. The reason so many die is because not enough are willing to change. You can stop it, starting right now. It's your life. Listen to your doctor. Eat better. Get moving. And welcome back to the show. I'm happy to have on the show today Richie Hughes, and he is the founder of Richie Hughes Ministries and has written a great book called Start Here, Go Anywhere, a book that will help us to make good choices, give us some tools on good decision making, and also some help on recovering from bad decision making. And I'm glad to have you on the show. It's Thank good you. to see you again. Thank you, babe. It's an honor to be here. Absolutely. Now, Richie, tell me what. What really put you in the lane to writing this book? Why did, you, why did you write this book? Well, I felt like about 10 years ago, God told me to do something with the word choices. Mm. I feel like everything that we do, you know, you made choices today. What time you got out of bed? Did you eat right? Did you exercise? I made a choice to be faithful to my wife every day. Every day we get up, we have to make choices. So our choices take care and they determine what we're gonna do for the day. They determine our lifestyle. They determine our circumstances. So many different things. So. Over about a 10 year period, I would just make some notes and journal. I like to journal during my devotion time. And I just stashed them away. And one day I gave them to a publisher. I said, hey, what do you think? So 30 pages of notes became 160 pages developmentally. And uh, that's the end result. That's awesome. Talk to us about uh, good decision making because so many of us make bad choices. Yeah. And I think all of us, everybody does at some point in life. But how can we recognize a bad choice. Are there red flags? Yes. You know, are there signs on the road yes. that says, mm, stop, you're, you're getting ready to go into a detour, a detour. You're getting ready to derail yourself. How do we recognize a bad choice? Well, our, everything that we do is based on our core values. Whether we establish them and write them down and process them and tell people about them is not the issue. We all know what we believe. We know what we value. We know what's important to us. Mm -hmm. So if we can understand before the, the decision is made, before the choice is made, if we can always base whatever we're going to do and not let our choices override our value system, so if we know what our values are, our core values, what's important, God, family, on and on and on, then we'll understand the process of the choice. The process of the choice, psychologist tells us, it starts in the mind. It starts as a thought. Then it becomes a feeling. Then we take action. So if we can stop it when it's a thought, before it becomes a warm, fuzzy feeling, oh, I think I would like that, I mm -hmm. would enjoy that, that would be pleasing to me, then we don't ever get to that area where we take action. You, uh, you talk about core values or a, a mission statement. Yes. You know, every company, yes. every church, every really good organization is founded on beliefs, a right. belief system, a set of core values. And I think that's a good exercise to establish in one's life. How do we generate core values? How do we de determine what it is that we believe or that we're going to believe? 
Well, how can we establish the, that set of core values that we can, that will guide and direct our lives? You know, it's just like what you mentioned with corporate, with church, with ministry, whatever it is that you do. The churches I've worked at, we had a mission statement. Every employee knew it. We had core values, four or five things that were, we're not going to compromise in these areas. And I think as individuals, we need to do what corporate does. Mm -hmm. We need to sit down like a church. We need to sit down like a ministry and establish our personal core values. What are the most important things to us? Rank those in order and be uncompromising in, in violating those core values. Mm -hmm. In your book, you talk about things that we all experience, challenges, circumstances, setbacks, compromises. Let, let's let's pick one of those. Let's talk about compromise. Mm. Uh, because, you know, th this this subject is someplace that everybody has walked. I don't care if you are, you know, a really strong Christian, somewhere along the line in our past or even on a daily basis, we, we make mistakes. Sometimes we do them uh, knowing what we're doing and sometimes un unknowingly. But Oftentimes we find ourselves making a compromise, and that's a will. We decide to do that. Correct. Talk to us about the danger of compromise. Well, compromise takes you further than you want to go. All if right. you violate the core value and you compromise it, and you don't break it, but you bend it, mm -hmm. and you compromise it a little bit, then the, the Bible even speaks about how you go a little bit further and a little bit further, and, and we all know that. So, you know, if you, I'm just going to try this one time. There's the whole commercial campaign right now. I'm just going to try this one time. And six months down the road, look where you are. Because you compromised. You made a decision, a conscious choice to compromise on what you know to be your value system and to break it or bend it or whatever it is that you do. So compromise ultimately, ultimately leads into breaking what your value system is. Mm -hmm. Talk about challenges then. Yeah. You, you mentioned those three things, yeah. challenges, circumstances, and compromises. Talk to me about challenges because, you know, a challenge, uh, you know, it's, it can be a setback. Right. It, it can um, derail us emotionally or spiritually or it can be a wall or a mountain, you know, that we have to get over. Right. Um, how can we decide... How can we make good decisions concerning challenges? Because sometimes challenges will lay us low and, and, you know, get us on our back where we find it difficult to get up. Talk to us about challenges. Well, exactly. And I like what you just said. I, I know you're a mother. I'm a father. My wife's a mother. But I watched my mother go through some challenges. I watched my mother lose two children, mm. one at 28, one at 32 years old. Those wow. are young. I'm the Very oldest young. of three and the only one still around. Wow. But I watched my mother choose to trust God when she did not understand God. She doesn't have the answers as to why God took my brother, or didn't take him, but allowed my brother to make choices that cost him his life. Mm -hmm. And I, we've never talked about it, but my mother found my sister suffocated in her bed at our home. Oh so imagine, Babby, as a mother, you know, those choices that you have to make. I mean, you think of Job's wife, curse God and die. Or do you trust when you don't understand? So everybody has challenges. No one is exempt. You have them. I have them. Some are more public than others. Some are very private. But the reality is we've all got stuff. And how you choose to overcome the circumstances and challenges in your life, that's what defines you as a Christian. Well, knowing that everybody goes through challenges, and maybe somebody even today watching this show is experiencing a challenge, right. um, I think probably in my lifetime this this season is a ch is a challenge that's pretty universal i mean yeah. so many people are going through difficult uh challenges financially right. uh, economically and so many ways how then since we know we're going to face them right how can we prepare for them and how do we bounce back i think that's the key is recovering the subtitle is how to make good choices but recover from bad ones because we're going to make bad choices we're going to choose the wrong direction every now and then. We all are. No matter who we are or where we are in our faith, we're always going to fail. We're sinners covered by grace. So how you overcome those, you know, there is a process to making that choice. You, like I said earlier, you think, you feel, you act. If you can get that thought process in a positive vein and choose to trust when you don't understand and love God and lean not to your own understanding, I think then you're going to be on the right path to overcome any challenge or any circumstances that, that, that you're faced with. Mm -hmm. when, we're, when we're faced with a, with a difficult challenge, sometimes it's hard to think. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's hard to get a clear head. 
Yeah. And sometimes we have to make a decision on a, you know, yes. in a split second of a moment. Are, are there ways that you can recommend to help us make a good decision um, in a time of crisis? Yeah. You know, someone dies or someone is sick or I, do I take this job or do I take that job? I'm, I'm broke. Do I pay the light bill or do I pay the mortgage? Well, if you don't pay the mortgage, you won't have a light bill. I can make that decision. <laughs> but help us, help us with, uh, with a standard that will help us to make a choice in, in a time of crisis. Well, reactionary choices are extremely difficult. You know, every day we get up and we pray for our leadership. I, I don't care who, who voted for who. You know, if they're my congressman, my senator, my president, I'm going to pray for the, those individuals because they're making choices that are so incredibly the pressure of what they have to make choices on each day. They need our prayers. So they have so much data. And if you have time to accumulate data and gather information and on and on and on, that's great. You can make an educated choice. Mm -hmm. You can make an educated decision. But what you're talking about is a reactionary choice. Mm -hmm. You know, circumstances hit you and you have to make a quick split second decision sometimes. That again goes back to my opinion to the core values. If you know who you are, I know whom I have believed mm -hmm. and am persuaded yeah, that he is able. able, then I can make the right choice because God's going to guide that choice. I've prepared myself. I've prayed myself up, as Bishop Jake says. I'm ready to make those choices because I've prepared myself. I don't, make, I don't think we're as, as compulsive as people would have us to believe. There is a process. It does go through a filter system. Before it comes out of our mouth, it goes through a filter system. So if we can prepare ourselves and understand how to prepare ourselves and read the Word and study and pray, then what comes out usually, most of the time, is going to be the right thing. Yes. Uh, we have about a minute left in this segment. But I want to know, uh, I believe that this is personal. This, this book is, a, it is. A, developed out of a personal, yes. a, your personal experience and your own personal walk. Is there a personal story that you can lean on in about 45 seconds, well, maybe we'll pick it up on the other side, about a, a crisis or a decision that you had to make on a split second. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll, I would like to talk about that in the next segment, but uh, my brother died of AIDS. The reason it took 10 years to write this book, baby, is because I couldn't say that word. I could not say the AIDS virus because my brother, an uh, unbelievably talented musician, went to New York, was going to make it, was going to be a star, had all the talent, had all the ability, but you know how hard that is in the secular world and MTV and all that was going on. And uh, that was a heartbreaking challenge for me. The day he told me that, which I want to tell you about, I had to make a choice. I had to make a decision. Our family had to make a decision and make a choice to love unconditionally. Mm -hmm. And we did that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we come back, I want to hear more about that. Okay, Great. Richie? Thank you. Richie Hughes, you don't, don't go away because after this break, we're going to talk more with Richie Hughes about this great book on decision making. After this break, we'll be back with Babby's house. What does it feel like when a woman is having a heart attack? It can feel like there's a ton of weight on your chest. You could also feel squeezing, pressure, or discomfort. Don't make excuses for these symptoms. Make the call to 911. You might also feel shortness of breath. So don't make up an excuse like you're out of shape. Make the call. Did you know feeling nauseous can also mean you're having a heart attack? Call 911. Breaking out in a cold sweat is another sign. Don't make excuses like it's menopause. Make the call. Feeling unusual fatigue is another sign. Call 911. And sudden dizziness or lightheadedness can mean a heart attack. Call 911. Unusual pain in your back, neck, jaw, one or both arms. Oh. Even pain in your upper stomach are symptoms of a heart attack. So don't make excuses. Make the call to 911 immediately. To learn more, visit womenshealth.gov slash heart attack. There are moments in your life when you think about what defines you. Mine was the moment when the doctor said autism. What do you do next? There is no cure. There is no game plan. Can you tell me what I'm doing is what I'm supposed to be doing? Because I don't know. As a parent, you're expected to have all the answers. But when your child has autism, there are very few answers to be had. That's why tens of thousands of parents across the country have come together online to give researchers the insight they need. It's called the EM Project. Every child is different, and unless we, as parents, 
tell the researchers what is specific to our child, how will they know? They don't live with the children. They don't see them every day. This is one thing that I can contribute. I can contribute to the answer. Join the Ian Project. We all have questions. Together, we'll find the answers. Welcome back to Babby's House. I've been talking today with Richie Hughes, and he's the author of Start Here, Go Anywhere, Making Good, good Choices and Recovering from Bad Ones. And we have all been there, as they say, and bought that T-shirt. Yeah. Um, but thank God, uh, because of Jesus, we have uh, an inner voice, the help of the Holy Spirit, that helps us to make right decisions right. and help us to rebound right. when we have made wrong decisions. Right. But I want to go back and finish the story with your brother. And I'm sorry to hear that he passed away of AIDS, um, some bad decisions that yeah. he made that resulted in him being ushered into eternity. Right. But finish the story for us because um, you being a coach right. um, and being involved in sports and being a manly man and hanging out with real men in the locker room, the discovery that your brother has AIDS and, and you said it was even difficult for you to even say the word. Right. It's not a very fashionable statement right. to talk about in the locker room. Right. Talk to me about your journey through that. Well, it's interesting, baby, because my, my brother was musical. He was extremely talented, and I'll never forget, I called him one day and said, hey, can we have lunch? So we met at a local Chinese restaurant right here in Atlanta, and I couldn't wait to tell him that I was getting married. I was going to ask him to be my best man. I wanted him to sing three songs, and it was going to be his day, you know, my wife's day, but his day, and he was going to take care of all the entertainment. I'll never forget saying, hey, bro, I'm getting married. He didn't say, yeah. He didn't say, no. He looked me in the eyes and said, I'm gay. And I was mm. just like, what? what? What does that, what, it doesn't even have any relevance to what we're talking about. But tears were in his eyes. And I think, you know, later we talked about, he said, I'll never have that opportunity. And I said, well, but you can, you know, and we talked about choices, went back to choices. But in the end, Babby, he, he did contact the AIDS virus in New York City, trying to make it in the entertainment world. And, um, but what I, what I would like to say to the viewers is that, he made one choice at the end that canceled all the poor choices. It cost him his life physically, but he made one choice that in, in eternal, it, it secured his eternity. Mm -hmm. He chose Christ, and he chose to die on the earth in order to live in heaven Amen. and see his father and see my sister, mm -hmm. who was already there four years prior. Mm -hmm. So one choice can cancel a multitude of bad choices. And that is the choice to accept Jesus uh, as Lord and Savior to make him Lord yes. and, and of our lives and help us to make the best decisions uh, because God has a, a plan yes. and a purpose right. for our lives. Right. And so all of those decisions will help us to get on the road to achieving his perfect will for our lives. Right. I can imagine that there are parents or of teenagers or maybe even teenagers that are watching today. And uh, my heart goes out to kids today because they're up against a lot of things that I wasn't up against when I was their age. Right. Can you give them some hope? Can you give them some advice before we wrap things up? Can you give them some advice on making good decisions? Well, I would like to say that all the bad choices you made can be canceled by one good choice. Choose Christ. And basically what, what I would like to say is Peter, you know, he denied Christ three times, exhibited the greatest amount of faith and the least amount of faith a few seconds apart. You see, Jesus, you walk on the water. Why did you fall in? How did you lose faith when you'd proven you could do it? Yet on the day of Pentecost, the guy who denied Christ, the guy who fell in the water, it was Peter. Because, see, God did not cancel his assignment. His divine assignment that you mentioned, Jeremiah 29, God's plan for Peter was to preach on the day of Pentecost. And all the mistakes and poor choices he made prior to that day did not cancel his assignment. Mm -hmm. So whoever's watching out there today, if you've got a plan, which we know you do, God's got a plan for your life, if you've messed it all up, you might be on plan B, plan C, you might have taken a, a, a not the straightest route to where you're supposed to be in his divine plan, you can still get there because God believes in you. He's the God of the 20th, 50th, 100th chance. Hallelujah. He'll always take you back. <laughs> I've had to have a few. How about you? Amen. Had to have some choices Amen. and some chances. Amen. I thank God for grace. Second, 10th, 15th That's chances. That's right. As many chances as we need to get it right. That's right. He never gave up. And our family never gave up on my brother. And there is someone that loves 
the person that's watching today. Regardless if you feel unloved or if you feel like you're, you're not going to make it or God maybe has forgotten about you, God's not forgotten about Amen. you. He's still right there. Amen. I believe we're the apple of his eye when we're yes. struggling the most. Oh, that's beautiful. He needs us. That's he, he needs us to come back into the fold. That's right. Um, this book is a, a, a result of a ministry that God has given you. Uh, he is allowing you to uh, write great books like Start Here, Go Anywhere on making good decisions. Do you have a, an opportunity to take this on the road, this message on the road? Do you speak and yes. deliver this message to audiences? Tell me about your speaking ministry. Well, we're, we're speaking somewhere about every weekend. We're headed to Cincinnati next weekend and uh, Lawrenceville, Georgia coming up, Dallas, Texas. Uh, so we're booking and getting opportunities in churches that we're really excited about because I feel like, Babby, it's a message of hope. Yes. And this time that you mentioned with the economy crazy and, uh, you know, Congress and Senate can't get along and all the things that are going on politically, we need hope. Yes. We need to turn the news on one night and know that there is hope. It's not all gloom and doom. Yes. This is still America. This is still the envy of every country in the world. People are dying to get inside of our borders. We need to be thankful we live here. Yes. And as long as there's life, as long as there's breath, there is always hope. Amen. And I believe that um, God is for us, the Bible says. And if he is for us, then who can be against us? Right. And so I'm grateful that you came by Babby's house today to talk about your book. And uh, once again, the book is called Start Here, Go Anywhere, Making Good Choices and Recovering from Bad Ones. Richie, thank you so very much for coming by Babby's house. Thank you for having and me. And I wish you well, and thank you for this great message. Thank you. It Babby. does give us hope, and I appreciate you being here. Yes, thank you. And thank you for watching today. It's always my joy and my honor to bring great speakers and authors and teachers and, and people like Richie Hughes who've come by Babby's house to bring you hope. That's why Babby's house is here, to encourage you, to lift you up, to, to let you know that because of Jesus, there is hope. And there is nothing, the Bible says nothing, absolutely nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Well, thank you so very much for watching today. And until I see you, may the Lord God bless you real good.